Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to talk about gradient vectors. What you want to imagine for this video is that you have some surface given by an equation z equals f of xy that's living in three dimensions, and you're standing at some point on that surface, some x naught, y naught, and you ask yourself, hey, what direction should I walk in if I want to walk in the direction of greatest initial increase on my surface? Basically, where should I take my next step to go uphill as steeply as possible on my surface based on where I'm currently standing. And to kind of illustrate this point, I came up with an equation for a surface, so some surface living in 3D, and I came up with some point for us to stand at. So let's look at what we have here. So here's our surface living in three-dimensional space, and you want to imagine that you're standing at this red point, and your job is to walk uphill as steeply as possible from that red point. Um, basically, you're pretending that you're a hiker on this mountain, and um, you're trying to basically, you know, you're like a mountain climber. Uh, when you take your next step, you want that next step to be as steep as possible. You don't want to walk down back down to the valley. You don't want to walk back down to your base camp. You want your next step to be as challenging as possible. You want to walk uphill as steeply as possible for your next step. And the way we get a handle on this on this mathematical question is we remember, we remember our equation for a tangent plane from my previous video. So remember for a tangent plane uh, to a surface, we had some point A comma B, and this was our equation for a tangent plane to a surface at A comma B. Well, I'm a little concerned here that we're gonna get ourselves mixed up because uh, we have a surface, Z equals F of XY, and now we have a tangent plane that also has a Z in it, uh, just to make sure we don't mix things up, um, I'm going to, instead of writing z in my equation for my tangent plane, I'm going to write L of xy. And I'm also going to move my constant term, my minus f of ab, I'm going to move that to the right-hand side. So I'm using L of xy, and I'm using x naught y naught as my starting point, and I'm moving the constant to the other side. But this linearization equation is equivalent in every, in every single way to this other equation for a tangent plane. I'm just kind of changing some letters around. Anyway, let's run this through Mathematica. So you can see right here, I'm gonna take the equation for my tangent plane, put it into Mathematica, and I'm gonna plot it alongside my surface. So you can see, now I could try to use my tangent plane to help me answer this question. If I'm standing at this red point, uh, what's the direction I should walk in to go uphill as steeply as possible on my surface? What is the direction of greatest initial increase on my surface from this starting point x naught y naught? And so, um, well, I guess I can make a little manipulate here to help us visualize this. There's infinitely many directions we could choose to walk in from this starting point, right? Um, so I could walk this way. Well, that's probably not the direction of greatest initial increase. I could try to walk that way, well, still probably not the direction of greatest initial increase. It's somewhere in this range, right? I know my direction of greatest initial increase on my surface at this particular point is somewhere in this range for my slider. But I want some sort of mathematical uh, rule here for finding the direction of greatest initial increase for every single scenario. I don't wanna have to drag the slider and test a bunch of values to lock in my direction of greatest initial increase. I want something something that's going to work every time without guess and check. So let's let's develop the uh, the theory for this. So let's pretend that the blue vector above represents a small step delta x delta y of some like fixed size, some little tiptoe sized step on my surface. Um, so the way I'm going to mathematically represent that is I'm going to say that the magnitude of delta x comma delta y is is equal to epsilon for some small positive number epsilon. Um, that sounds really formal, but it's just that I'm going to take some small little tiny step of fixed, fixed size on my surface. And uh, I know that the direction of greatest initial increase on my surface is going to be equivalent to finding where my tangent plane is the steepest, right? If you look back at this picture, that's kind of the correspondence I have here. The direction of greatest initial increase from this red point is going to line up with aligning this slider to where my tangent plane is at its steepest. So now I'm taking a question about a surface 
and reframing it as a question about a tangent plane, which is convenient because it's easier to work with planes than it is to work with surfaces. So anyway, um, what I'm going to set up next is something to do with the equation for my tangent plane. I'm going to try to stick with planes for now because that's going to be easier for us to pin down. So essentially, we're trying to pick the correct delta x comma delta y. We're trying to pick the right direction to walk in next so that the change in height on our tangent plane, our delta L, that's just the change in altitude on our tangent plane, is as big as possible. I'm trying to maximize this expression. Well, what is the change in height on my, on my tangent plane? Well, I take the altitude at my new point minus the altitude at my starting point, right? Um, this is the equation for my tangent plane evaluated at, well, wherever I, am, I end up, after taking my step delta x delta y away from x naught y naught from my initial point. So this is the altitude where I end up minus the altitude where I started. Well, that's the change in altitude on my tangent plane, the change in height on my tangent plane. Um, anyway, I could take this expression and run it through Mathematica. I just cleared all the variables to do it. So I kept this, you know, my f here, I kept that as a general function rather than the uh, specific example that I had above. And here's what Mathematica spits out when you clear all the variables. Um, I have delta x times f partial x plus delta y times f partial y. So let me write that out right here. Oh, but wait a minute. I feel like I can kind of do something with this expression here because uh, we've learned quite a bit about dot products. And, and uh, so at this point, we kind of realize wait, we could actually write this as delta x comma delta y dot product with f partial x comma f partial y. And then we have a formula for dealing with dot products as well. Remember, v dot w is magnitude of v magnitude of w times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. So now that I have this in as a dot product, I could use my dot product formula here to say magnitude of delta x delta y times magnitude of f partial x comma f partial y times the cosine of the angle between these two vectors. And this is the expression here that if I can maximize this, I can maximize my change in altitude on my tangent plane. Well, we don't have many degrees of freedom in this expression because the magnitude of delta x comma delta y, we already established that's some fixed a step of some fixed size, some little tiptoe sized step of size epsilon that's never changing. And then this is a constant, the magnitude of f partial x comma f partial y evaluated at my starting point x naught y naught. That's a fixed constant, whatever that number is. It doesn't change no matter what delta x and delta y are, this doesn't change. So the only thing that I can vary here is the cosine of theta the theta being the angle between the next step I'm going to take on the surface and this other um, vector f partial x comma f partial y. Well, wait a minute. I know that cosine of theta is at its largest when it equals 1, and I achieve that by setting theta equal to 0. So the largest we can make this expression here is when theta is 0, which means that our next step on our surface, our delta x, delta y, should be in the same direction as f partial x comma f partial y. Oh, I just answered our question. That's the direction of greatest initial increase on our surface. This is our next step. This is the direction our next step is going to be in. And that next step should be in the direction of f partial x, f partial y. So actually, we just answered our question. The direction of greatest initial increase on a surface is in the direction of f partial x comma f partial y. And this, this is a vector quantity, right? It's an ordered pair. It's a vector that's made up of two partial derivatives. Um, and this vector is so important, we actually give it its own name. It's called the gradient vector. And in fact, it's so important, we even give it its own symbol. So you could read this upside down triangle f thing as you could, you could read this as the gradient of f is equal to f partial x comma f partial y. Or uh, this upside down triangle does have a name, it's called del. So you could also say del f is equal to f partial x comma f partial y. And long story short here, I know it was a, a long road to get here, 
but the gradient vector is designed to point in the direction of greatest initial increase on a surface. So basically it tells us where to walk on our surface if we want to walk uphill as steeply as possible at some particular point. Um, so let's actually do it. Um, so I, here's a lot of code. You don't need to worry about that, though. Um, I ran the gradient vector through this code, and I fixed this blue vector here in the direction that the gradient vector tells us to go in. Now, this blue vector is not the gradient vector because it's in three-dimensional space, and the gradient vector is two-dimensional. But this is where we would walk next on our surface. And so what's kind of cool with what we did is we used a tangent plane to find this. So we found the gradient vector using tangent planes. So that's the direction of greatest, that's the direction I should walk in for the greatest initial increase on our surface. Now we found it because it corresponds with the direction, the steepest slope on our plane, on our tangent plane. But I can turn the plane off here because now I don't need the plane anymore. Now I could just see this is where I should walk for the direction of greatest initial increase on my surface. Uh, first thing I want to point out is the gradient vector is designed to give you local information. It tells you where you should take a teeny tiny little step from your starting point to go in the direction of greatest initial increase on your surface. So it doesn't give you global information. If you look at this picture here, you can see um, if you were to follow this blue vector, it doesn't take you to this local maximum. It's not smart enough to point you to the top of the mountain. That's not what it's designed to do. The gradient vector is designed to tell you where to take your next teeny tiny little step in the direction of greatest initial increase. And if you wanted to end up at the top of the mountain, you would have to keep recalculating new gradient vectors and it would kind of curve, those gradient vectors over time would kind of curve you up to the top of the mountain here. Um, but one single gradient vector doesn't do that work. Uh, it just tells you for one step that you're about to take uh, where you should take that step for greatest initial increase. Um, and then on top of that, you could see something even more obvious here. Um, not only does this gradient vector not take us to this local maximum, but it definitely does not take us to the global maximum either. The gradient vector gives you local information, not global information, meaning that it's not going to like you know, point at the top of Mount Everest or something. Um, it's, it's just in a small neighborhood of where you're currently standing, where should you take your next tiny little step. It's not able to see the big picture of your surface. Anyway, uh, the other thing I want to point out, I mentioned it briefly a minute ago, but I should say it again. Um, the blue vector in the plot above is not our gradient vector. Um, you could look at my code and see how I plotted it, but it's not exactly the gradient vector because this blue vector is living in three-dimensional space. And if you look at it, the gradient vector is two-dimensional. So there's something interesting going on here. We have a two-dimensional vector that's telling us information about what we should be doing in three-dimensional space. And at first that might seem unfamiliar or strange or something, but the more you think about it, the more it kind of makes sense because you guys do this all the time, right? You pull up Google Maps on your phone well, your phone is flat and two-dimensional, right? The, the image on your phone is two-dimensional. Um, yet you're able to use Google Maps to navigate when you're driving in your car because you're taking two-dimensional two information from a picture on your phone and applying that to three-dimensional information as you're driving in the real world where there's hills and mountains and going up and downhill. Um, so let me, let me try to put that into context for you. Here's how the two-dimensional gradient vector can tell us three-dimensional information about our surface. So let's pretend again that we're a hiker and we're going on a hike on a mountain. And uh, maybe this is like some sort of really famous national park or something. Well, when you show up to the national park, you typically don't just get out of your car and start hiking. Um, you know, you stop in the National Park Welcome Center and you pick something up. In this case, uh, you know, like a map. You don't wanna get lost while you're going on your hike so you're gonna pick up a paper map of that park that you're gonna be hiking in. Uh, the mathematical name for this for our map is going to be a contour plot. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And then because this isn't the real world, but you know, um, a little uh, mathematical example, uh, this National Park Welcome Center is gonna have something else available to you, which is kind of cool. Um, you could buy a magical compass 
whose compass needle always points in the direction of greatest initial increase on our surface. So this little gradient compass, um, that's our gradient vector. So in this scenario, um, when you take the compass out of your pocket, it doesn't point to north, but instead points to the direction of greatest initial increase on your surface. And you guys, if you had a little magical compass like that, you'd be able to use it if you were in a national park because you'd pull that, that compass out of your pocket, you'd see where the needle is pointing. That needle's giving you two-dimensional information, but you would be able to translate that two-dimensional information uh, into where should I walk in three-dimensional space to go uphill as steeply as possible. So I, I could actually show you what this would all look like. So here's your contour plot. This is the map that you would get from the National Park Office. And you could see how this contour plot corresponds to this surface, right? You guys can kind of look at this from different angles and see, see how that corresponds. So this three, the surface living in three-dimensional space corresponds to this two-dimensional representation. And then, what is what do we have right here? Well, this is a gradient vector. Um, and you can see how I plotted it here. The gradient vector is the partial derivative of f with respect to x, comma, the partial derivative of f with respect to y. It's a two-dimensional vector, right here, a two-dimensional vector. But it gives us information about what to do in three-dimensional space to walk uphill as steeply as possible. And you can see this next little step right here by the red point, this would be uphill as steeply as possible. But you get another picture here of how um, it doesn't continue to work forever. It, that first step is uphill as, as steeply as possible. But if you kind of continue this vector along, you could see how we miss this local maximum right here. So it's giving you local information for a tiny, teeny, tiny little step, but it's not smart enough to point at this local maximum or anything. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, big thing that you should take away from this is that the gradient vector is a two-dimensional vector that points in the direction of greatest initial increase on a surface. And the way that we find it is by having a good understanding of tangent planes to surfaces. All right, have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. And you can see some, uh, some more videos about the gradient vector on my YouTube channel um, that will kind of continue uh, these ideas.